5100. Like, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on very cusp of uh, Jim, I feel. There's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of ladder anxiety. The closer I get, the less I like want to play. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's so common, man. Everyone gets excited when they're they're near that thing. I think it's kind of like for me. I always like to think about how there's my peak MMR, but then really I have to bring up my uh, my bottom end. Because we always have like a range, right? Of like yeah. 400 MMR, maybe. <clears throat> I like to say four, 500 MMR, even if that's like a bit bigger than normal. When you're having one of those really bad couple of days, <laughs> where like the meta is really hard, you just keep getting cannon rushed, and it's a new type of cannon rush you can't handle or something. Right. That's uh, that's kind of rough, man. So there's those times where you will dip like a whole 400 MMR from your peak, right? Um, can you just make me the uh, the lobby host, please? And then we'll, yeah, we'll start second, zooming uh, through uh, these. Promote the lobby host. There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so um, I like to always think of it like when I get close to a new benchmark and I start getting like, ooh, and I'm kind of feeling myself and I'm like, ooh, yeah, I'm so good right now. <laughs> and then I kind of remind myself like this is probably my peak. And I try to instead attach my understanding of like where I am on the ladder to like several hundred MMR below that. And I go, okay, I got to bring that that midpoint or even that low point up to mm. that that thing so for me that's an interest and everyone has their own little mental tricks but for me if i'm trying to get gm and say the boundary is 5250 or something like that i'm not sure exactly it varies of course but let's say it's you want to you want to kind of pick wherever rank 180 or 170 is not not the very bottom yeah. of gm right um and you want to say okay cool so if it's 5200 I want to aim to try and get to about 5350, 5400 as my peak, right? So then even when I dip a couple hundred MMR below, hopefully I'm still in GM, right? So it's kind of giving yourself a little bit more room. Um, and it also then suddenly it's like, oh, just one win over the top isn't really as important as like, you know, slowly just getting your average up a couple hundred MMR. And it just, I think, centers you and makes you realize, hey, this is still many many games it's not just one yeah. win that does this it's like the long-term performance right right um yeah so <clears throat> uh very easy still to um to get a bit excited though so um let me link your document up to you so in terms of uh your matchups and everything like was there a specific Matchup you're struggling in? Is it this one's EVP we wanted to focus on most of all? Uh, I think it's specific strategies. Um, like, yeah. for instance, uh, this game, um, it's going to be Sky Toss. And I feel like the build I did should, like, win, but it doesn't. So that's one thing I wanted to take a look at. Maybe I'm just, like, not doing the build right, or um, maybe it shouldn't be working as well as I thought, or... Um, I think I got this build from um, a build that I saw like Cyril doing. So it's basically a two base Hydra, like fast push, because he's he's gonna open void rays, as you can see. Yeah. So I'm just trying to hit like a really sharp Hydra timing here, mm. and see, like you can sort of see. It felt like I should have won here, but I I don't. Yeah. Groove Spines isn't quite done. I mean, the thing is, the power of battery and cannon, it's very hard to break with Hydras. So they're such yeah. fragile units, and you had, like, battery overcharge and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm a big... I, I think fast Hydra timings can be really bloody good. Um, if you, you know, in this case, you kind of... If you know the guy is playing, you know, Sky Toss, you can do this sort of stuff. You can still you can still do, like, a three base into a big old Hydra timing um, as well. Um but yeah, we see here that yeah, anytime those cannons and batteries are able to just freely be part of the fight, you're in huge trouble. Um, getting some queens in front can help. I think Hydra pushes can be pretty sick. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. Normally, I look for a Nidus is when I do this. But with your build here, whew, super cutesy. But I actually think a real small tactical thing would actually change everything for you. Um, 
And that would be, because we're, we're not really going to afford a Nidus Worm, right? We're on 61 drones, 6 gas, so you're a little under mineral saturation, but you're, you're getting the full gas because Hydras are so bloody expensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, double slow drop, I think, actually works real well here. Um, so ZVP, Hydra Push versus Sky Toss, Lightshade versus Nam Hasir. And... Um, <clears throat> yeah, I actually think if you just basically, as standard, if they've got like cannons and batteries up, if you can hide what you're doing and get across, that's amazing, right? Like, this is why one of the advantages of doing the three base version sometimes is like, I'll even drop like a fourth hatchery and be like, all right, look, I'm going to do a normal game. Um, and then it's like, bam, Nidus, you know, pops up and Queens and Hydras spill out. And I'm like, sweet. And hopefully they haven't built many cannons and batteries, whereas... They know it's coming long enough, you know, they get these like layers of cannons and batteries and it's really hard to like break them open. But if you could get a slow overlord here, or even you could, uh, you could load it up the very top actually, and another one down here, and then you just drop both of those kind of behind the mineral lines or, you know, on the edge of the base. Um, even just getting four hydras in each of those mineral lines, I think could, could potentially be a huge thing because right when you're hitting, and that doesn't cost you anything, right? That literally right. just takes eight hydras out of the army. Because if we look at the way he manages this, and um, pretty good timing, by the way. I do like this, like seven minutes hitting with a ton of hydras. It's pretty awesome, man. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like the th thing that happens here would have been real nice, I think, if we had like an overseer um, scouting ahead. Eh? If we saw yeah. those void rays and caught them, oof. Because that, that's actually, yeah, that's one of the things is like if you catch them out on the map or like they're not in position, you can like run in and like bust the cannons and batteries on one of the bases. That's great. But th this player's done really good like wall offs in front so you can't move right on top of them and stuff. Like, yeah. so you can't all get your Hydra shooting. Like, this is really annoying defense. <laughs> it's like this this player has uh, definitely defended some Hydra pushes before, man. <laughs> You've really got to focus fire if there's ever batteries in an engage um, as well. Yeah. Yep. I think once I took this fight and lost it so badly, I probably already lost the game. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Because the three carriers are about to pop as well. So it's like you could play it out. There's always a chance, right? If you can, like, obviously the, the transition would be immediately drop an infestation pit, go to Vipers and try to start adducting stuff. But it's going to be pretty damn, damn awkward. You're behind the curve. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. In that fight, I think definitely it's like just try to focus fire a little bit more against batteries. I, I do think trying to do two slow overlords can be really good. Um, focus fire voids uh, when batteries around. Focus fire shield battery as well, if you can. Um, Depower key pylon if uh, if there's a weak spot. Right, these are all things where you can just run in. Um, Ling slash changeling vision to see where their army is. Uh, if you can catch a few voids on the map or smash a wall of cannons before they get back, you can you can you can win much easier, right? So we still got to think of it. We still got to be wily. We can't just be a simpleton, right? And that like you know it's very easy to just be like, well, I'll just make my attack and it should win. But there's so many little details that I'm sure we're going to be able to come up with. Like, so here, it's a shame we don't have the Groove Spines just yet, right? But yeah. maybe we could have run right in, kill the Zealot, kill, like, like, kill these two pylons or kill these cannons or whatever, right? Like, a bit more decisively, if we knew those Void Rays were out there, right? Like, we could be like, get in there, get in there, like, a little bit harder um, and try to just get rid of those cannons and batteries before these Voids come back. Or we could have moved back and tried to zone out the void rays even a little bit, come south and cut them off, right? Try to, right. you know, catch them um, one or the other there. And that comes down to map vision. So if we look at that, I think we should always have a few zerglings on the map. And right when you're kind of coming across with the push, ideally, we're going to try and see where their voids are and that sort of stuff. Likewise, at this sort of point, if you see those voids kind of hanging around the map, let's go back even further here. Yeah. So these voids run around being annoying. Pick up a couple of overlords. Yeah, he was trying to get into the main, I think. But he didn't commit. Yeah. If you can 
come around them though, like hide the hydras. And then the important thing is to not show what you're doing preferably. Right. Because number one, we don't want them to know. So showing those hydras there doesn't do anything except tells them we've already got really quick hydras, right? Whereas if, if you get a chance to like, say you had seven hydras there and then you go around the north and you came in from behind and get a few void rays, even killing one, two void rays is huge. If you can kill them nice and early, it's like really sick. Likewise, <clears throat> let's also think about disrupting his build up. So often players who do this style, they take a third base off the back of very little. So one of the best ways, if they're not building any oracles, now obviously it depends on the player. If someone builds oracle into void ray or void ray into oracle, it's a bit more solid. But if we look here, let's just look at what he's doing and just think about it broadly. So there is one gateway the fastest fleet beacon of all time, which is unnecessarily fast. It's a cannon behind the main mineral line. Like, how janky can you fucking get? And um, <laughs> he's just one zealot, you know? No warp gate. No ground units. There's literally just void rays to defend that third. So this is the sort of play where, don't get me wrong, those void rays can push off early zerglings, but if a player plays this sort of sky toss, usually they have multiple gambles that are inherent in the style. So that's something to keep our eyes on as well. Um, uh, weaknesses of pure Sky Toss players. Uh, Ling's denying third can be huge. Um, anything to hit the third before the cannons and batteries are ready, right? Yeah. Equals win. And that's, if that happens, so, so by delaying the third, that sets up for the next wave. It slows down your hydras as well. So for you, it would be like, if you see a pattern, and that's for you, you got to do an analysis of the players you're playing against on ladder, right? If you're playing this guy over and over and it's always, oh, they always take a nexus between 4.30 and five minutes. All right, I'm going to build like 16 lings right on like, you know, four minutes, 15 or something and just go across and always look for a cancel on that third. Like that might be really sick. Um, but if they're taking their third, sometimes right on like three minutes 50, like super far. Sometimes it's like later, 5.30. Sometimes they've got oracles sitting there and a couple of adepts. Might be a bit harder to get success out of it. So obviously I can't tell you, you know, like exactly what the meta is with the players that you happen to be playing against and stuff. But uh, just keep your eyes on that one. Because that sometimes is like, you think, man, this this is such a hard matchup. So hard against Sky Toss. And then you just kill their third a few times. And you're like, oh, this is way easier than I thought. <laughs> you know, this this guy never gets their build up going. And it's it's way, way cleaner. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that can be really powerful. Uh, I guess the last one is, yeah, hiding that push, right? Um, so you've got a bit of creep. Obviously, he's been... <clears throat> excuse me being annoying with the void rays you don't build many queens because you're like rushing like you're doing a i guess what i would even though your build seems like it's countering his build and it kind of is it's it's very one-dimensional right because you don't have like a fourth base you're not oversaturating the minerals or anything you're low on queens so you can't even really zone back the void rays that much the weakness of this is that you've got a very one directional one-dimensional push so if he reads it correctly he can just overcommit to these batteries and cannons. Now, if he was massing cannons and batteries like this and just probing, I don't know. I kind of feel like if you were just taking a quick fourth and then going up to like a quick fifth base and going like hive and, you know, spires and playing the late game, I don't think he's in a, a great position with this by any means. Like it's not terrible, but it's, it's definitely not great, right? There's so much static D coming down. So just putting it in that context, I don't know if this player always plays like this. Um, I reckon they play against a lot of Hydra timings on the ladder, but uh, definitely something that could be looked at. And uh, I, I guess the- another, yeah. I have another replay against him that uh, I tried something else. So we can look at that because I tried to uh, do a Ling to stop his uh, third early and it actually worked. And I thought I was ahead, but uh, in the end, uh, it still wasn't uh, like a win. Yeah. I mean, it still costs you a lot of drones, right? That's the thing. Sometimes we forget. We get like a, a delay or a kill on the third and we feel like the game's <laughs> over, but still quite a few moves beyond that to finish it off here. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, we can at that replay uh, next just to see the, uh, the different kind of perspective because you were talking about um, just trying to cancel the third with the links. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I guess I just wanted to make sure we, we theory craft fully just before we move over. So just one yeah. more minute if we can here. So Nidus is another option, right? So in terms of like, do you like the idea of just doing the Dropper Lord? Um, are you, you know, if you, and that, this could also be something where, uh, the trigger for that could be pretty simple, right? Yeah. They have lots of cannons ready. If they have lots of cannons and batteries, then that could be a thing. Problem is, they got void rays. So even getting those overlords in position without OV speed is really fucking hard, right? Right. Um, mm. You could do it, but that's, I, yeah, that's actually why Nidus is probably a bit more reliable now that I think about it. Just because it's like, you'd need to time it out so at like four minutes, you're sending these overlords like bam bam around the edges to get in position right and and that's something you could always have them ready and then okay you're you're getting ready to move out from your side of the map at like six minutes and you, your changelings have already scouted oh he's already got tons of cannons and batteries that are close to finishing i'm gonna have to do with that um but i think that the trigger for these alternate attack path attacks right alternate attack path uh you know attacks is is if they have that and maybe it's just you drop a reactive nidus um yeah okay let's hop out let's hop in that other replay i think i think a mixture of this this all gives us a bunch of options to play with i feel like i'm missing something that i've forgotten to think about so <laughs> we'll see if that pops into my head but um yeah let's let's see what happens in this game where you you did you kill the third or, ca or cancel it in this game uh cancel it i think uh, let's let's see I don't. Uh, no worries. Let Just me make, make me the uh, the lobby host. There yeah, we there you go. go. Beautiful. All right, let's take a look. <clears throat> yeah, this map's I um. Going over this replay and thinking I was kind of in a good position, but then I couldn't uh, capitalize on it. I think so. Maybe. Do you always go for some sort of hydra push, no matter how the start goes? No, in this game I went for uh, corruptors. I think. Someone in chat was confused. They said three base version. This seems like a three base version already. Um, it wasn't a three base opening. It was a almost four minute third base from Warlock in the previous game. Yeah. Oh, right. This one starts with the cannon. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you caught that, but he actually yeah. put two cannons on him. Yep. I, uh, I don't know. It looks like you should be good after that, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was all right. He okay. tried to throw that cannon early on the natural. <clears throat> so do you have any response in this sort of scenario, this sort of game, when you're up against um player who's failed the cannon rush like this? I don't. I just, uh, I just, I knew he was going sky toss because he always goes sky toss. Plus I could see the stock already <laughs> with my overlord. Yeah. Okay. So what's really cool when you defend a cannon rush like this, is the thing is if he's got a low ground wall off he can expand quite well it's hard to actually get ahead economically but what you know at this point where you've defended it let's check this out his gateway is not finished normally yeah. his first adept has popped by now in this case his gateway hasn't finished if you think about that his core is going to be another 45 seconds from okay. here before an adept could start he's about a minute and a half or more behind on his tech so hats off to you for great cannon defense. After this, you see he's expanded low ground and gate is minutes late. This means tech is minutes late. So what does that mean? If you think about it, if you know he doesn't have his gateway, his core, any tech that follows the core up yet, um, that basically means you don't need to worry about anything. There's nothing right. he can do for a long time. So any pressure, any tech is minutes late. So you can take a, you know, you, 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 you should focus on droning up three bases super hard um, with much later defense than normal. Right. You can add a super fast lair and go into Spire don't need to use it but you can go into spire or hydras very early or simply threaten to do so 
This also gives Overseer Scouts. Why are these really good things? Well, guess what? Well, you might be like, Lair's still expensive, right? That slows down your droning. Nope. Look at what you are going to start in a moment. Your link speed is going to start up in a sec. Your link speed is delayed, which is good. But you actually could make a lair instead of that link speed. Because any adepts are going to be so friggin' late, right? His core is just finished. 3 minutes 30. So you actually, I mean, definitely, yeah, I guess if he had two gates and he makes two adepts straight away, he could get there before link speed's done. Not the end of the world, though. You could deal with that with slow links and queens. So the whole point is, though, you could have a lair up insanely fast, and that means you're just, like, you've got options. So if he was to go Robo or Twilight, you could go a very quick Spire, and it would be amazing. On the other hand, if he was to go Stargate, like in this game, and go Oracles, you could go into a big round of Muters to start. Or if he's going Phoenix, you could go Corruptors. If he's going Void Rays, we could also go Muters. Or we could just not use the Spire and watch him... In this case, this is a bit different because you know he's a Sky Toss guy. But against most players, even if they open Stargate, it's back into ground, right? So simply by showing them a Spire, often you can bait them into getting a second Stargate and a bunch of Phoenix, and then you just don't ever build any muters. And then you go, lol, I'm just building Hydras, dude. I built a Spire, cost me 200 minerals, 200 gas, never used it, get fucked. Um, <laughs> so you got to just think of it in terms of the way Protoss plays is they need to hard counter your units because you can build a billion roaches. They need immortals for that, right? Or voids and cannons or whatever. You can build a million muters all at once. You know, it's like they, they've got to be kind of prepared ahead of time for those tech options. And it costs them a lot of infrastructure. It's way more expensive for them to get up like multiple stargates and upgrades and multiple robos, all that sort of stuff. So that's actually a really nice bonus. Um, you can delay ling speed and instead get a very fast lair. So that's how I really like to take advantage of a lot of cannon rushes. However, if I was playing your opponent here, Mr. Namchir, Nam, Namsir, uh, fucking Jesus, I don't know how to say his name. Do you know how to say his name? It's just Rich Man. It's, he just, it's just, oh yeah, yeah, right. It's just Rich Man backwards. Okay. Yeah, no. He just right uh, backwards, that's all. All right. <laughs> Fucking rich man. Um, playing with one hand, Skytoss style. I like it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so basically, yeah, yeah. I, I think just drone the fuck up like real hard. Um, you don't need to worry about anything. I think your third could have been even earlier here potentially. It was still pretty well timed, but you like could have got it maybe even before these queens. And, um, and that would have been pretty good. I don't think what you're doing here is wrong necessarily because you are droning pretty hard but it's just important to like understand the situation right because a lot of people will be doing really well at this point then they'll be like oh it's you know this time i need to build spores right. it's like well actually like the stargate's not ready in this case of course his stargate's under your overlord thankfully so you kind of know that but all people will be like oh it's the normal time to build spores i should build them and it's like no 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 even if you don't know what's happening you build those spores like a full minute or so later than normal right if you need to get a roach horn for safety build it like a full minute later right um and that is how you really take advantage of this fact that they've delayed their tech because there's one thing they can do to stay even and that's chrono probes check this out he's still four probes up on you which is uh just you know hey quick nexus <laughs> he doesn't have any tech he can't slow you down at all so yeah. we're going to make sure we push that economy hard. So we should have absolutely had some links on that third earlier. Right? I, think this, I think this is actually the wrong replay. Yeah. But now, I was about to say, there's no way you cancel this third with links. Uh, yeah, I think um, there... I, have, <laughs> I should have another one then, yeah. But that's <laughs> this fine. Looks like it's a, this looks like it's a Hydra build again. But I've noticed because you know you're playing your teammate and you know how he plays, you're really low on your scouting in these matches, right? Like, mm -hmm. not having any Zergling sitting at the third base locations, letting him take this for free. He had another game where he's just getting a ba away with taking a base with no units, right? So yeah. two games in a row, he's kind of done that. The previous one, he at least had some Void Rays out earlier. But this is just, like, wide open. Wide open for the killing. This is also the same sort of player you could kill really easily with a Ling Queen Nidus, actually, rather than your Hydra attack. Um, sorry. Ling Queen Nidus will be the easiest victory. Um, yeah, Dark did that versus uh, Goblin. He did that versus Goblin. Um, he did one okay. off quite a lot of drones. It was like 54 drones. But I think you could do it off a lot less than that. Basically, just a three base. Uh, you only need the one gas geyser, right? Um, you don't even need melee. But if you get melee, that's kind of awesome. And you just, yeah, Nidus a fuck ton of Lings and Queens. And the reason... 
Goblin actually beat him there? Was it Goblin? Shit, it was Skillis. <laughs> I, always, I always get the new off-and-coming Protoss players confused. My bad. It was um, Skillis, I'm pretty sure. So um, Skillis managed to get up plenty of gateways because he, was he wasn't going Sky Toss. He just goes a whole bunch of Void Rays into uh, ground. So he got a ton of like Zealots and Adepts up, which ended up defending it. The Void Rays just could not fight against that many Queens because the Queen range is too good, right? So um, that's a beautiful build order where if you want to get some easy wins, like you're playing someone who... who I, I look at what he's doing and I say, this is cheating. This is not someone who's like having to do anything in the game. He's not having to, you know, cover himself. He's got nothing interrupting his flow. He's got like no real hard pressure he's doing. And if someone is able to just kind of sit there and, and stick their hand down their pants and play the game, it's like, you know, a Villo Protoss. Um, I'm like, no, no, no. Like there's always, there's always some way we can probably just kill this, right? So I think that would be a really good way of doing it. Do you uh, have that um, lane, high, uh, lane queen uh, build somewhere? That, or can you put it in the document? Yeah, I'm yeah. writing it in now. It should be up on my YouTube, I believe. So I'm just checking. Doing me little... Oh, me little so that's crap. what I'm trying to Fast queens and links. Yeah, it's really fucking simple. I, I would I would actually advise you do it off probably only two mineral lines and one gas, which is like 35 drones. Um, maybe a few drones on the third, but he did it with like a fully mining third, which I think was just unnecessary. Dark invades the American weekly. I think this is the game we're looking for, which is a funny name for a video because it's a Russian versus Korean, but you know. Uh, yeah, romanticide. Where was it? Was it the final game? I think it was the final game. Yeah! This is it. Copy video URL at current time. I'm going to put that in Twitch chat as well. Um, thank you, Burn and Stash, by the way. Just subscribed on the channel. Thank you very much, Burn and Stash. And uh, there we go. There's the link for you, Mr. Warlock. Um... Second page in your docker. Have you got your document open, by the way? Uh, I don't have it open, no. I I've linked it to you on Discord. So, oh, if it lags you or anything, though, don't worry. You can open it on your phone or open it later or whatever. But, uh... It's open. No oh. worries. Um, so this time we went for another big Hydra push. It's once again a bit of a simple frontal push. Oh, get under, Mama. Get under her. Stutter, stutter, stutter. Oh, we didn't start a step on time. Oh, we could have killed Mama. That's a shame. So he's being a dickhead with his Void Rays, which as annoying as it seems, is probably good for you, right? Um, you have nine queens this game, which is like a lot to not have a Nidus Worm popping them out in the front because they would be so good against Void Rays and, and Mamo and stuff. Um, this is a game where you need to go for the natural because there's only one cannon there. So you need to like push up because the third has way too many cannons and batteries at it. And it's all about kind of concave management. But if you can cram enough hydras and lings on that natural to take out the cannon and the battery there, that would be good. Good job taking out Mama. I think you win this game, right? No. Oh, you got to focus fire those hydras. Oh, you took a bit too long to start focus firing. And, and yeah, you attacked into all the cannons on the third. But yeah, you're just being a bit too simple with your attack. Um, as much as it seems like it should work, and you're absolutely right for doing this attack, and I've done the exact same thing you do here, where I go, well, this guy's doing a dumb, dumb thing, massing voids. I can break it just with a Hydra attack on the front. But then you remember, anytime you get really simple in your counter to someone's build, they scout it ahead, and then they just build a fuckload of static. It's like, oh, <laughs> this is actually a very straightforward attack, which static defense does defend. So, especially with the new batteries and cannons. Um, so yeah, you're like almost like, breaking it each time almost yeah that's exactly what it feels like it's just like it, it's one click i think if i had the mothership the first time i think it's very close to yeah to winning. i think it's that also though like if he responds quicker though on the other hand he could have just pulled it back and the mother mama, mama never dies there if he's watching straight away right um so you, you've got to i think have a better plan so i do think like nidus hydra queen or just doing a nidus queen zergling would make your life way easier here and um i'll try that i'll try yeah. that. i'll try games with that i think this is the game with links and corruptors same map so it would make sense yeah, yeah let's take a look i got confused probably with the, the maps it looks like this is also starting with a cannon uh a different game though because the pylon is still alive 
<laughs> yeah. Surprised you let it live so long, but uh, I guess, you know, once you get rid of the probe, it's all right. Nice quick third, you're droning well. He's conning probes like a mother trucker. You actually saw the third going down this time, and you stopped the completely illegitimate third base. Well done. <laughs> he just goes for it again. Yeah, over and over. He <laughs> did. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of you, rich man. I think everyone should play StarCraft the way they want to. But this is actually the most just brain dead, disgusting way of playing Protoss. I'm going to throw that out there. <laughs> I lose to this all the time, man. <laughs> you can tell I'm so salty. Just watching this, I'm like, oh, this fucking shit. I'm so salty when I watch this shit, man. Um, which is a good good reminder to try and try and remind ourselves to be creative and intelligent at showing why it's bad. If we think a style's bad or it's silly, usually it has weak spots and it's our job to take advantage of those weak spots. Um, so we've gone just mass mute a Ling here, which is super fucking... I would not do that normally. That's super dicey. Thankfully, he doesn't know you've done it, but... Um, I think yeah. that's good damage here. It's just he can pump Phoenix, which he's not for some reason. I don't know why. I am going Corruptors on the back of it. I just don't... Because you're expecting him to build Phoenix and he's not. He's just going carriers. Yeah. Well, th this is... Okay, you could have just kept building muters. He knows you're afraid of him. Um, if you had Overseers, you can like actually just kill these Void Rays as well. All right, 20 muters versus 9 Voids. Like, you could trade on that. I'm not very good at the Void Ray versus Muter maths, but yeah, you should be killing him. Like, you've got a giant economy. Unfortunately, your economy, while big, is actually the wrong ratio. So if you're going to play a Sky, to Sky, Sky Zerg style... You need to have your fifth base gases up so quickly. So you should have taken this fifth and both gases at it at the same time, like three minutes ago, because you okay. clearly already knew you were going down this path. You need those 10 gases and um, you just like, it's all about the gas. Um, if you're going to play such a heavy mineral style, uh, you, you actually would want to have melee upgrades and Bane speed. And you would be doing the style where you break this not by fighting it directly, but by just base trading essentially. So you could you could do that. That is another option here is instead of building muters, imagine if you just made like 50 banelings and you just crashed half of the lings and banes in here and half in here. Void rays don't kill that. Carriers don't kill that. He loses his entire economy. You can still have a spire making upgrades behind it. You can have some queens and some spores. But the idea is if he comes across the map to kill you, you're like, oh, I don't have things that shoot up. I've only got some queens and spores. And it's like, that's fine. He's going to lose a base trade. Lings are the best base trade unit in the game. Especially when you have Bane links to like smash walls down and stuff. And when you're in a big economy, you can literally click on a gateway and just blow it up, right? Like you can just open a hole in any wall. So that's actually the funnest way to beat a Skytoss player if they're kind of on the back foot enough, like in this sort of game where you've killed their third early a few times. That's my favorite way. You also get ultras eventually, which take no damage from carriers. As long as you have armor upgrades, ultras are just immune to carriers almost. They take like one, two damage a shot at most. It's it's really funny. So um, <clears throat> yeah, it can be pretty sick. But uh, as it is, you're going mass Skyzerg. You need to be trading like nonstop. You need to be in there killing gases, picking things off, rotating around, picking off units when they, and then pulling back, um, you know. So you can't just be chilling for so long. So you're still controlling through F2, which is going to make it a little weird. Uh, yeah. yeah, Pulling back from prismatic alignment is always good, but you can probably go right back in. That's going to wear off in 10 seconds, and then you should go straight back in and win the game. Oh, why are we running away? Go win the game. My man. Oh, stop running. <laughs> He's traumatized you. He's really traumatized you, man. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like to keep the muters and corruptors on one control group, ground units on another, right? So the or run bys on another. And just always try to, you know, corruptors in front against Phoenix, muters in front against Void Race, right? Um, doesn't really... Yeah, but now you, you're letting him out Archons. Yeah. Uh-oh. You're, yeah. you're just camping, man. We're not doing anything. So... 
The Corrupter is a unit which is the most one-dimensional shit unit in all of StarCraft. If we think of most units as someone who has like a lot of varied life skills, you know, you have your, like your really interesting friends to hang around. They like have all these different skills. And there's that one guy who's like, oh, I, I do re like the most boring kind of accounting ever. And that's all I do. And I have no interest in anything um, ever. <laughs> no offense to accountants. I'm sure there's a lot of great accounts out there. That's what the corrupter is. The corrupter is like your really boring friend who's just like absolute vanilla. It, it just does one thing. It's just, and it's pr pretty average at that one thing. So anytime you build corruptors, you should feel a real sense of urgency to use them immediately. Um, because the longer it goes, like, it's just they're good versus carriers, they're good versus phoenix, they're hard, they can kind of pee on next side to take them down. But the longer you chill, like in this case, oh my god, you're clumping. No! <laughs> you're clumping for Archons. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Once they have Archons, you need to leave them spread out. Clumping them up is really bad, as we see there. Those Archon splashes are huge. But yeah, you, you've just let him catch up here. If you want to play this style, you've just got to be trading. And you actually could have done it because he never built Phoenix, so he didn't respect it. What this game should have looked like if it was high level, your muters commit, you trade on the Void Rays a bit, he's panic building Phoenix. That's after you've killed some probes like you did at the start. And then yeah. he's building Phoenix, you're building Corruptors to match his Phoenix. So then as your Corruptors are smashing, whenever you're fighting, you come in. Say say you come in on, um, on this base here and you control click your Corruptors and move them in front of your muters. So your muters are killing everything. If he's not there, your Corruptors can try to pee on the next side. But basically, whenever the fight happens, your Corruptors just zone out those Phoenix. And the thing is, if his Void Rays rock up, obviously you need to get the fuck out of there because Void Rays wreck Corruptors, right? But the Void Rays are kind of slower. So often it's the Phoenix run in front, your Corruptors kill one or two, and then you run away. Meanwhile, your Muters pick off a gas, kill a bunch of probes, run away, find a new angle. Come in over here. Go around the other yeah. side of the map. Come in over here. You keep doing that right. one over and over again. Yeah. He always messes on Voids, I think. He doesn't go Phoenix, really. Yeah, well, just keep massing muters then and win the game that way every time. Just, yeah, if you've got a position like this, you can you can just trade on them. Obviously, shield batteries and cannons will make a difference, but you're way more mobile, even even with the, uh, the move speed. What is the difference, actually? What is the difference? <laughs> it's uh, 5.6 versus... 4.65 so you're still even even with the upgrade you're still more mobile than the voids voids are kind of tanky they're not the worst unit in the game they just don't do much damage so with the ability to just outproduce him um and definitely in this sort of game where you're ahead you can do it if you guys are more even in economy i wouldn't be trying to smash it with muters but um it's uh it's, yeah it's all good so this was one where you built a nice advantage you could have uh could have beat him from here keeping lings to block the third real important um that being said, in this game, remember that he took his third off way less defense than the previous one. In the previous one, the first game on Lightshade, he actually had three voids out when he went for his third. Th well, third one right. about to pop. You still would have been able to get the first cancel real easy. And at the very least, you can keep those void rays pinned back. But that's something where, what's something else? Let's look at your base. Uh, you have five queens. So if you're gonna always do the Ling, pressure on the third, yeah, that costs you some drones, but you don't need spore crawlers, which you're already skipping pretty well because you know he doesn't really attack you. You also don't need many extra queens, so you're doing a pretty good job with that. Just keep that up. Don't be building 15 queens because your lings are forcing the void rays to stay at home anyway. <clears throat> so anyways, for you, it's more important to just focus on one uh, lockpick for this padlock of Protoss. Um... So there are a lot of things we've talked about as options. <laughs> what do you get actually focus on, man? Yeah, I, I, I just try, I've been trying many different things against this this build, but uh, I kind of like your Queen Ling idea with Midas. I'm gonna try that a few games probably. Mm -hmm. See how that works out. Um, so I mean, you guys obviously know each other and stuff, so. He's just going to start building like more cannons and batteries earlier in his main and stuff. So, but the thing is, if you can keep him off a third base, it could open up really well. Um, if it's something where you're delaying his third consistently anyway, the Hydra option might be better, right? Because okay. the third's being delayed. So, so that might, might feel better. Is like, let's just go for a Hydra Queen Nidus or, yeah. Yeah, I think Hydra Queen Knight is pretty good. Um, you were doing that off like 57 drones before. But uh, 
Yeah, I think you could. Um, yeah, you could. You could easy easy afford an Idas in there, even if it means you've got a, a few less Hydras, build a couple of Zerglings or something in the mix, and um, and that can go real well. And you know, like I said, if you can get inside the main base as well, that'll be pretty epic, um, especially on a lot of maps. If you've got the main base, you get a high ground above the third, where you can shoot the mineral line. So you don't actually need to go down into this fucking SimCity rabbit warren of cannon battery that <laughs> is just terrible. Um, yeah. If it does go to the later stages, you need to make some brood lords, but you've made uh, too many. So you made 17 this game. And he's got 6 arc on 6 high templar. 12 brood lords max is what I would say here. Um, building the fields of spores is really good. You actually have a solid 21 spores so you're the only problem here is you're about 73 spore crawlers short of where you should be in this sort of game and i may sound like i'm kidding but i'm not um <laughs> it's like silly the amount of spores you want to build if you get to this stage i don't like this stage i find it really mundane just building drones building spores building drones building spores building drones building spores i'm like oh this is fucking lame and i have duck two carriers kill them he's got 10 more okay you know but um yeah, it, it can work out in some decent ways. You've just got to be really, really careful to keep moving those spores forwards. Oh, very nice parasitic bombs you're dropping in there. It's just a shame when, when the fight doesn't happen straight away, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Right. Um, if you want, you can get infestors as well. Fungal power. If they've got a lot of void rays especially, oof, it's juicy. But it's also good whenever the interceptors all shoot on one target, like there. So whenever they initiate a fight and all the interceptors all swarm on top of that one front spore crawler, you just center a fungal right on top of that spore. You just go fungal, wait two seconds, throw another fungal on the exact same spot, and sometimes you kill like 40 of their interceptors. So if you look at the units tab, 86 yeah. interceptors are out right now, you kill 40 of those, that carrier army loses a crazy amount of its damage. It's kind of insane. And that Void Ray actually killed a bunch of the interceptors there with... Um, Parasitic bomb. But that's kind of hard to engineer. And then it's like, oh cool, I'm winning. And then you get cocky, you chase, and you're gonna get stormed to fuck. Nope. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Alright. GG's. Yeah, and then he starts doing some zealot run buys and stuff as well. Well done, well done. Really yeah. nice play from him. Cool. Alright. Did we want to go think about a different strategy, a different matchup? Yeah, let's go over. Um, I think there was a ZVZ I also wanted to look at, but um, yeah, just uh, I think uh, before we do that, let's just uh, try to wrap up this, what you're thinking with, um, like what's the best way to, to handle this, this kind of play with, uh, against Protoss? Well, it all, it all comes off your baseline, right? So I think when you're playing against Rich Man there, you're clearly metagaming each other. So that's your own special thing. But thinking about it against a ladder opponent, it kind of comes off what your standard opening is and what you're naturally dealing with a lot and like what path you're going down and then just kind of choosing an option that feels good and, and, and working it. Because there isn't just one type of Sky Toss. Like what we just saw there was the most extreme version of Sky Toss with no warp gate until 25 minutes in the game. Um, but you could play people who do Glaive Adepts into Sky Toss, uh, do, you know, whatever to a couple gateways. They go into a pack of Void Rays and then just into Charge Dot Archon. There are so many different variants and things. So, I mean, it just comes down to what, what's your, your normal game plan in ZVP? What's your standard comp at the moment? Um. Well, any anytime Protoss opens Glaive Adepts, I always feel like they get really far behind. So I prefer that they open Glaive Adepts. Really. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's these it's these uh weird Stargate openings that throw me off. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, um, so what's your standard composition though against a, a normal ground Protoss? Like whether they open Stargate or not. Like what would you are you playing Ravager Bane or what? Uh yeah, Ravager Ravager Ling Bane, like in into like Hydras or something. Uh that's what I usually try to go for. 
So in, into Hydrobane. Into Hydrobane, into into if it gets like really late game, then then Broodlord. Yeah. Yeah, so this is just like pretty normal style. I mean, definitely, um, yeah, I mean, Hydras is a pretty big deviance uh, from where you normally go because you normally don't go Hydras quickly. But uh, yeah, so I think it's just important for you to know your trigger, right? So is it when you see a single Void Ray as their first Stargate unit, you go down one of these tracks, you kind of assume it's Sky Toss or like what 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 for you tells you that they're going sky toss and you need to go on a different track uh more than one stargate usually it's a like if i see two stargates i always assume it's some sort of um sky toss um if i see more than like four air units let's say so <laughs> yeah or phoenix or four void rays or something like that i assume it's some sort of sky toss um, because I, I I I haven't really seen any any Protoss open like four Phoenix into ground or four Voids into ground. So I, I I've seen like one or two. Like yeah, I've never seen like four. So I always assume if I see more than four air units, I'm I'm a, I'm automatically assuming they're going into some sort of air tech. Yeah, and I'm writing this all down um, on the, the second page of your document. So two Stargates, more than four Phoenix or Void Rays, attempting to take a third base with no gateway units. Yeah. No gateway <laughs> unit production. No warp gate at four minutes 30. These are all very obvious tells. So if, we're, if it's rich man style, you just see, oh, he's... Still only got a fucking... First of all, he has a zealot in the wall. Why is there a zealot in the wall if I've gone hatch first? So that's, you know, it's... <laughs> zealot in yeah. wall as first, you know, as first gateway unit. That in itself is a bit of a tell. No gateway unit production, no warp gate. There are some... If they're doing that super straight for it, some very obvious tells of what they're doing. Um, cool. So from there, it's just about you choosing an option that you like. And like you said... So, what is your path? You, you, you said it yourself. You're going to do a Queen Ling Nidus. So, the question for you is, okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, I mean, how many drones do you want to do it off? In, in the video that, that I linked up, it was um, like more than I, like I said, it probably don't, I don't prefer, I don't like that many. I was like, eh, I don't know if that we should really be using so many drones. We could probably do it faster and harder than that, but... Who knows? Um, so what do you think? Turn that lava into an egg. For those who don't know. Um, what, um, I kind of want to try this queen ling thing just because. Yeah, I well, that's what I'm saying. How many drones for the queen, the queen ling push? Because dark went all the way to 54. And I think it's and way he, too many. Did he do four hatches for that or or three he only has three okay he just doesn't miss queen production he like just does not stop building queens and lings he doesn't even have melee or anything um so if you think about that though that's like way too many drones because remember what i said if we have because you've only got oh he does take a second gas what the fuck does he take a second gas for <laughs> i'm looking at it and i'm like do we even need this? What the fuck is the second gas for? I don't think he ever needs the second gas. I guess for the transition, maybe? If it doesn't work. But let, let's go right back in this replay, actually. Um, yeah, I guess he just takes it... Along with starting the lair? Even before that. Oh my god, YouTube, hurry up. Okay, so <laughs> uh, and keep in mind he it. loses this game, so I don't think it's perfect execution by any means. But right, we'll I think off that main, I throw down a fourth hatchery. 
Yeah, I think just four minute layer is fine. I don't think you need the second gas. So you could do, the thing is, even with two gases, that's 38 drones, 38 drones plus 16, 54. So yeah, he's literally just gone 16 on each mineral line plus two gases. But I, I don't think we need the second gas because if we look at this this replay, which I'm looking at right now and I'm skimming through, he's always got more gas than he needs, I believe. Right. Uh, I guess second gas gives you a bit of breathing room. A bit of breathing room for squeezing in extra nidus heads. Does it cost, what, 75 gas? It's probably more than you need. I think single gas is fine. Um, I would say four minutes lair, eight drones max on third base. Uh, non-stop queens all game, non-stop lings, and then Nidus and Flood endlessly. Uh, Overseer or two for scouting. Um, and we're going to say option for second gas to afford more Overseers uh, since Void Rays might snipe some yeah so you 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 who knows you might find you, you might find you need a bit more gas my instinct is you probably don't but either way you should be able to flood in from about five minutes 30 onwards with just tons of lings flooding into their base uh the void rays will have to be on the defense and uh yeah you just keep trying to pop niduses up inside the base as well as out front the base and um just endless queens popping out try to maintain a concave with those queens. Your ling count tries to surround whenever it can. And uh, queens are so good versus void rays and they're so tanky. So it's Would actually really sick. Build, uh, spores or do you think that's... Oh yeah, you can build some spores with it as well. Yeah, I think that's like not 100% necessary. Like you don't need to start with that. But if things are like dragging on a little bit, you can, yeah, you can try to build some spores there as well. I think normally the spores are a bit too clunky to like kind of rely on. Um, if your opponent like attacks into them, that's great. Yeah, he pops them out like about a minute after the rush first starts. He brings like three, four drones and starts building spores, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the build. I don't think there's any more details. That is such a fucking basic build, man. <laughs> it's so easy. I'm <laughs> looking at it and I'm like, I feel like there's details that I would normally have to write down. Like Evo timings, gas timings. Nope, 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 nope. Um, if you want, I guess we'll, we'll add option as well. Option to add melee upgrade um, earlier also. Um, would need second gas probably for that version. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, that, that that's it. Um, try that one out. I think it'll work really well versus people building heaps of void rays, man. Yeah, I'll give that one a shot. Um, there's there's something else I want to ask. So you were talking about the, the late game. You were saying I need a lot more spores. If you want to play so. the late game, which you don't. You're clearly trying to kill your opponents. But yes, technically, in late game, you need crazy numbers of spores. Like, I really like the way you built them far forward in front of his base on that map because you knew if you could deny that base in that replay, then things were going to go a lot better for you, right? right. Um, yeah, yeah. So basically, you need, you need crazy numbers of spores to create areas that they can't push through, right? So if you think about it, spores beat interceptors to some degree, they're not the most efficient, but they, they add to what else you've got, right? Because otherwise you don't have any way of killing interceptors. Because if you've got Broodlords beat their ground army, right? That's really important for pushing back Storm and Archons. Otherwise they'll fuck up your Corruptors, right? Right. So your Corruptors beat the Carriers, right? They can run forward and snipe those. If you So if you ever catch their High Templar and Archons too far forward, you just kill them with your Broodlords or Lurkers. Um, you'll see games where Scarlet just runs forward and burrows her Lurkers, kills all the High Templar, and her Corruptors come in and wipe the air on me. That can happen, right? Um, and then you've, of course, got Vipers. What do they do? Say they smash massed voids with Parasitic. They also grab individual carriers away from the, the storm protection, right? Right. And then you've got infestors, which also add to the spores, I would say. Infestors, so they add to the interceptor destru destruction with chain fungal over spores. They also can, um, they also multiply the 
parasitic bomb mass void destruction, right? If you can lock fungal on top of parasitic bomb. So if you can land that combo, that's always huge. Parasitic bomb fungal is like the, even against, even against carriers, it can be really quite powerful if you stack those two spells. And it just like locks their army. Um, also can be chained on high Templar. So if you kind of come in, throw a fungal at the edge of your range, pull back the infester, run another one in, throw it at the edge of its range, three fungals to kill high Temple Templar. Right. And if all their high Templar are in a clump, which they normally are, bam, once again, if you ever get rid of all their storm, your corruptors can just fly right in there. So in a pitched battle, if you think about it, you want all the interceptors to die, but you can't attack them with anything, right? So if you ever jump on their army, so how do we kill them? Spread corruptors before the fight. Don't clump them. So if you can spread them almost even flank maybe with two squads or, or just have them in a big grid, you know, like a magic box. Um, fly directly on top of the carriers. Parasitic bomb. Plus fungal plus storm should annihilate the interceptors, right? Because if you think about it, even if you just land one or two parasitic bombs on top of their own units, normally the interceptors aren't taking damage. But if you put your units on top of their units that are parasitic bombed, the interceptors start getting hit by the parasitic bomb, which okay. normally they're not getting hit by because they're on your army, not their army. You put both armies on top of each other. Same thing with storm. Your units, yes, they're going to take, they're going to get fudge and stormed really hard, but that means they're storming their own interceptors and units as well. Fungal's not as important there. I'm going to take fungal out of that because just landing the parasitic bomb and the spread is the one to do. Once again, wow, what if you do that and there's still four archons on the ground? They're just going to smash all your corruptors anyway, or there's enough void rays to just beat your corruptors, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's really complicated. And that's why normally, like, I just focus on building a billion spore crawlers and then just abducting carriers a few at a time and be like, nah, nah, you can't fight me over my spores. Every time they do, you know, it's like just grab another carrier, pull them in, pick off the uh, High Templar with the Broodlords and then stutter step the Broodlords back quickly whenever they try to focus them down. Use some fungals over the, uh, the spores. It's all very complicated and slow. And the thing is, it's like, you're literally, you're just like scratching your opponent. You're just slowly picking off a carrier or two, picking off a few carriers, picking off a few high Templar, killing a bunch of interceptors, and then replacing your spores and building more spore crawlers. The thing that's really hard is they can always just attack somewhere else. So if you've only got spores, say, in one area, they can just go around, and it's so bloody hard to win a max out air battle versus sky toss without having spore crawlers as part of it, which is why normally you want to kind of have spores everywhere essentially like all across not just the middle of the map but the edges as well so all your exposed bases need to have a big clump of spores in front of them and that's why constantly building drones and then building spores and then building drones and building spines if they're doing zealot run buys as well becomes like part of your challenge is just keeping up your production which is frustrating because you're supply capped. So you've got to build 20 spores, build 20 drones, build 20 spores, build 20 drones, you know, because you don't want to be too far below max on army, right? Right. Yeah. So the earlier you can get set up for that, the better. But uh, I, I really honestly would say don't play that game. Most people don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. It's fucking boring, man. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would put all of my mental effort into playing a fast, decisive efficient open opening countering my opponent's builds finding the right timing attacks like for me that's that's exciting fun starcraft and i think looking at the way you've played in the past i mean yeah i've seen you use control groups and adjust but you're not really you're mostly an f2 guy like you'll use a control group for your muters you'll use a guy for this uh, there are pro gamers who hate this style you need to be a real like snoot level just guy who enjoys slowly like destroying your opponent like sharpening a pencil like it's just the slowest you're just sitting there just sharpening your pencil you're just like doop 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 i'll win an hour and a half from now <laughs> you know it's it's an arduous task so it is not for everybody and the problem is once you start playing those games your reps get way down you play a three-hour ladder session you play two of those games the session is like two-thirds of the way over you know it's like you don't get a lot of games and it's very draining so if you enjoy that sort of game or you say i am motivated to become good at that sort of game because like the idea of being unstoppable in the late game 
appeals to you and it sounds fucking awesome, you're motivated to do it, go for it. But you need to be very motivated to engage in that. Otherwise, you're just going to finish a game like that, win or lose, you're going to be drained and you're going to be like, oh, fuck this shit. Skytoss is so <laughs> stupid. And if it, that, that means you're putting yourself in a lose-lose situation, right? Because you're like burning out your own passion for the game and your own mentality just by choosing a strategy that doesn't suit you. Yeah. I think you might be right. But I, I mean, I kind of want to get better at all the different styles if I can. It's just, it's just, you're right. It's, it takes so much mental effort to, to, to like improve your gameplay at, at all different yeah. areas of the game. And don't think you're being a simple noob. These guys are playing totally greedy, illegitimate styles. This is actually just good StarCraft. If you're punishing people who play these pure Skytor styles and these these kind of silly, they always have big weaknesses. And if you're letting them get away with it, like you're actually that, that's that's a hole in your StarCraft. So don't a lot of people are like ah oh, nah. I, I always go to the late game, even against Skytoth, and I figure out how to beat it there. And I'm like, yeah, well, like you're just giving the guy a free pass. Like, that's not good StarCraft, you know. There, there are so many areas we can never focus on every approach to StarCraft. So uh, don't don't feel like you're selling yourself short, dude. There is an art form to making these Queen Ling Nidus attacks work. Queen Hydra Nidus as well, off three base, another one. I'm keen to see you kind of figure out and level up over time. Um, I love that we've talked a bit about disrupting them early with like Ling Floods um, on the third. You know, one big big ass round of Lings, cancel the third. You, you've been getting better at leaving Lings out there watching the third. Like, I think I think we've got a lot of dynamic things that can set us up for the win. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how that Queen Ling attack goes. I think I, I might start doing that. If I see someone building multiple voids, now that, now that I've kind of gone over the video and I've talked to you about it, I'm like, I think I'll be practicing this side by side. Next time I see someone send a second Void Ray out, I'm like, bam! You know, I'm going to go directly down that path. Non-stop Queen production, straight to the lair, make the Nidus Worm, go, go, go. Yeah, I think I'll... Yeah, I want to practice that a bit too, see see how strong it is. Because Queens do feel stronger again, so they, they don't instantly pop like, like Hydras if you yeah. just click one. Dude, there's like a thing where when you're fighting as the defensive Protoss player, you're like, fuck. Because <laughs> if you want your voids to be all fighting, they're all getting shot by this giant, like, because the queen, the queen range advantage is huge. <coughs> Not as big as it once was, but um, it's still it's still good range. And yeah, even with battery overcharge, I've, I saw like, I think there was a few points in that game, Skillis versus Dark, where Dark just like shuffles his queens forward slightly. It just clicks on a void rate and... It just dies in two volleys. The battery overcharge can't save it. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Skills is constantly trying to pull those Void Rays back and they keep it getting picked off. And Dark keeps trying to knight us in the main. So the Void Rays keep having to go off and deal with that and then come back to the front. And there's so many times where he almost gets his Zealots and Adepts surrounded, but he barely gets them to safety. And I mean, that's a, that's a successful hold. Um, there are so many people out there who they see a pro gamer defend a, an aggressive timing and they're like, well, that's a bad timing. I'm never going to learn that. I am that weirdo who like, I see a build fail, but I'm like, no, 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 I see the potential. I'm like, I'm gonna go practice that. I'm gonna go learn that, that looks fucking sick. I mean, if D Dark did it for a reason, I don't think he executed it perfectly. I think Skillis defended almost perfectly, but uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's good shit. So good luck with the practice with that. Um, save replays of it and, and let us know how it goes. Like I said, this has motivated me because this uh, the Void Ray openings have been pissing me off as well. Because sometimes they go Sky Toss Sometimes they go into a charge lot timing. I, I, I really struggle to scout because those super fucking fast Void Rays are running around killing all my overlords and overseers. They won't let my lings in. I'm like, God damn it, let me see what you're doing. So yeah. um, I've been doing a lot of Hydra Queen Nidus, but sometimes it's really not the right call. Like I, I tried it one game and the guy literally went like three Void Rays into double Robo Colossus and had two range Colossus. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? My Hydra Queen Nidus was like the worst move I possibly could have done. But um, like that game would have been perfect for Corruptors, of course. Yeah. I, I've played against um, people that try switch into the Double Colossus. Yeah, Vipers also are like the easiest. Like if you play Roachide or Viper and someone's like, I have Colossus Void Ray. And you're like, oh, okay. Like I'll just abduct everything <laughs> and win the game. If you let them add Storm to it, that's when it gets really scary. But it's that's such a crazy amount of tech, right? Because normally they don't have a Twilight Council. 
So it's not like they just drop a Templar archives and start storm. They got to go Twilight into High Templar archives into storm. It's like often they don't even have gateways. They got like two or three gates. So yeah, um, yeah, those styles are pretty one dimensional. Um, someone who plays like one star, a couple of void rays into into, into Colossus, like. If you just make one big overwhelming round of corruptors, one shot of void ray, one shot of void ray, one shot of void ray, take out the corruptors, easy, uh, the colossus, easy peasy win. But uh, it just I think highlights that we've got a if we're playing reactive and defensive, we've got to scout a lot. Fortunately for you, I think with a queen ling nidus, you'll get in there before the colossus are ready. Even if they get one or two out, queens yeah. actually kick the shit out of colossus. So <laughs> as long as your lings don't clump up and get roasted by him, queens are a really good versus colossus actually. Well, even the void is feel so weak, but then it's it, I, I feel like it's not really the void it's it's the shield batteries that make it really hard. Cuz then yeah. when they're sitting on the top of the shield batteries, they feel so invincible almost. But I know. if they're like one foot forward and they just instantly die. Well, that's it, man. That's that's why. I mean, because you're doing a Hydra push as well, which is so fragile. But that's the thing. If you can open up a new front, you're like, oh, I don't have to. I can fight in the main and there's nothing here. You know, you like pop back in the night, just pop out in the main or something. You're like, lol, get wrecked. <laughs> there's going to be some good shit. It, it is funny when you have Queens versus Shield Battery units as well, because you're spamming Transfuse, nothing is dying. They're getting healed. Nothing is dying. But just remember, if you get 10 plus queens all shooting a void ray, they can kill it very quickly, uh, even where shield battery overcharge will struggle, especially when you come in with lings at the same time, because then the battery is like trying to heal multiple targets and there's like a slight delay between it healing each target. So it's actually not, it's going to be like healing a zealot that's getting hit by zerglings and then the void rays are just getting shot down by the queens. That sort of stuff actually happens. Um, yeah. Interesting. I never even thought of that. Yeah, because I've, I've looked at times and I'm like, there's not enough DPS. How is it? How are these units getting shot down? And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I actually look at the replay. The battery's like, I'll heal you. I'll heal that cannon. I'll heal this cannon. I'll kill that void ray. I'll heal that void ray. And it's like, it can't, it's not instantaneous, you know? There is a very slight delay of a couple milliseconds on each thing. So yeah. Um, oh, awesome, man. I got a jet, but um, good session. I, I look forward to seeing how you go. I mean, I think you're still at a, a very high level. And um, yeah, just keep on, you know, working those little details and just remember, um, try to try to let go of holding your fist too hard over every win or loss. You want to bring your average up 300 MMR. We want you to hit 5,400, 5,450 peak MMR. We want to bring that average way up, you know, a couple hundred MMR. So it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be like a bit of a grind. So just keep putting one foot in front of the other and, and you're going to get there, man. Thanks. Awesome, man. All right, well, let us know how it goes. I'll uh, see you in the chat and everything. And uh, good night, All man. Right. Good luck. Catch you later, see bro. See you later. All right, good little session there with Warlock. And that was an interesting one because this is something, with the new Void Rays being so popular, how the fudge do I beat this? <laughs> I mean, we just went pretty deep on, 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 uh, on, on that. So I hope this one helps you guys out a little bit. Uh, and we will see you in the next video. Goodbye and good night.